Well, hi there. It's uh, it's Saturday. It's not Friday. It's Saturday, November um, 16th, 2019. Journal 227 and T plus 228. And I'm depressed. I'm de and, and I'm because of any of the reasons that you think I might be depressed, I'm depressed because of my own neuroses and the fact that the journal number doesn't doesn't meet the uh, um, transplant number. <laughs> They're different and that disturbs me somehow. Um, and it shouldn't. Uh, but there's a reason for it. And, and uh, since I started out this blog uh, and video um, as a function of my diagnosis, treatment, and recovery seems uh, only reasonable to make sure that um, I am honest and forthright uh, when it comes to full disclosure and, and uh, all the things that continue to pertain to this journey, this odyssey. And, uh, and the reason that we're late is one over the past number of weeks, probably closer to a month, I've been having difficulty with a, a range of really odd symptoms or conditions or circumstance or whatever you want to call them. Uh, not the least of which is having difficulty swallowing, having a great deal of pain. Um, every time I go to swallow, uh, anything really, but particularly anything that is, uh, that's solid. And, uh, as you can imagine, when it's painful to swallow, you have a choice. You can either try and get through the pain or you start to actually reducing the number of things that, that you're going to eat and, and quantity as, as well as, um, the quality of the food that you're eating. And, and that's what was happening. There were other symptoms associated with that. Um, discomfort, swelling, sensitivity, tenderness in, in my mouth, between my cheeks and my gum, and, and, uh, and a bunch of other things that were really unpleasant and uncomfortable. And uh, when we saw the doctor last, which was just over three weeks ago, almost a month ago, about three weeks ago, I made him aware, I made my treatment team aware of that. and uh, we decided at that point to take a wait and see attitude. Well, um, in the process of waiting and seeing, it got worse and worse. And finally, I contacted my treatment team at the beginning of last week and uh, shared the fact that things weren't getting any better. And the decision was made to push my appointment, which is for the 21st of November up until uh, up to the uh, 15th, which was yesterday. And that appointment was going to start with um, an endoscopy. Uh, and an, an endoscopy is one of those medieval kinds of, I say medieval only because it starts with somebody sticking something down your throat, but um, that something happens to be a camera, which is invaluable in, in diagnosing, diagnosing what's actually going on. So it turns out that um, there are two large ulcerated sores in my throat. And there are also um, what appear to be a series of rings appearing on my uh, esophagus, going down my esophagus. Uh, all that leads to two different possibilities, actually three possibilities. One is that this is an instance of graft versus host disease. Um, the second is that it's a viral infection because I have no immune system and it would be easy for one to take hold and start wreaking havoc on my body, um, especially if it went unnoticed or untreated or we waited too long. And the third possibility is that it's both. It's both a viral infection and an instance of the beginning of a GV HD condition. Now, I mean, the other symptoms that are involved in this, the, the sensitivity of my gums and my cheeks, uh, lack of elasticity in, in your mouth, 
uh, pain in your tongue, actually, of both sides of your tongue, um, all point at, at either or GVHD, graft, graft versus host disease, and a viral infection. What is graft versus host disease? Um, if you're not familiar with what it is, that's great because that means you don't know anybody that's either had a, a stem cell bone marrow transplant or a hard organ transplant in which the white cells, the T cells and the white cells of the, the graft of the donor reject the cells of the and uh, in the case of a stem cell bone marrow transplant like mine, even one in which uh, we were fortunate enough to have a 12-point match, not a 10-point match in the same blood type, which all reduces the probability of GVHD, um, it's still more common than not to have it. Um, as a matter of fact, it probably would be more... Uh, unusual if, if there were no symptoms or signs of GVHD. Uh, the viral infection would be something that is almost uh, um, to be expected. You know, viruses, bacteria, whatever, have no, no formal immune system. Your immune system is completely gone, 100% immunocompromised. Those things, you know, it's just a matter of time before you get something. It's a germy world. Uh, I never understood how, how people could be germaphobes before, you know, like uh, the, Howie Mandel or a, anybody else that's particularly um, sensitive psychologically to being in a germy world would act the way they do. But now I get it. I mean, I'm that way myself. I've got a, it, even though I don't have to wear gloves anymore, I've got a pair in the back pocket of my jeans. Um, I've got multiple pairs in the console of both cars. I mean, uh, I have three different masks that I wear and that are never far from me. Uh, respiratory masks for the same reason. So uh, we started yesterday morning at eight o'clock at the City of Hope, which meant that we were up at six to get down there on time. Actually, 5.30, a quarter to six to get down there on time. Um, had the endox uh, wound up taking a bunch of samples or a lot of uh, biopsies taken. We'll get the results back this coming week, I hope, and see what's going on. But I've already gone back on um, anti-rejection drugs on my serolimus or serolimus, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Gone back on my antiviral drugs, my acyclovir. Gone back on my adivacuan can't pronounce it. I think that's how it's pronounced, which is the vilest, nastiest tasting lemon. It's kind of yellow, faded paint yellow, what we used to call bird shit yellow, if you'll pardon my French um, stuff, um, along with some prednisone and a bunch of other stuff to try and help me get back on track again. Um, realistically, I, you know, you, I guess a normal person with a half a brain would be frustrated, angry, upset, depressed. And I'm not. I mean, I, I'm, this is just to be expected. It's a normal of getting better. All my other numbers from the blood work I had done yesterday were really excellent. I mean, for the most part, they were right where they're supposed to be. Um, either normal or getting damn close to normal. I had 11 point... Uh, 11.7, I think, 11.9 uh, hemoglobin, which is just a, a point below low normal for a male adult, which is excellent compared to being in the sevens without having enough energy to get out of bed. So all of that's good. And uh, it's important to remember that you can't lose that positive attitude um, you can't lose that attitude of gratitude that helped you get through all of this stuff in the first place. The fact of the matter is, I'm 100% donor DNA. The fact of the matter is, G 
GVHD can crop up at any time for any reason, uh, at least for the first two years post-transplant. Uh, the fact of the matter is, none of the markers that indicate primary myelofibrosis are there any longer. So the disease is gone. I've got lots to be grateful for, and I'm not going to stop being grateful now just because I have a little bump in the road. So I apologize for missing yesterday. The blog is probably more important to me than you know or think. But um, as you can tell, there was a really good reason when we got home from City of Hope after my lab work and after visiting the doctor, uh, both Leslie and I were pretty well wiped out. And uh, I just couldn't do it. I just didn't have it in me. So uh, stay well, take care. I'm sure I'll feel well enough to go ahead and reach out tomorrow. Um, and again, uh, having you take this journey with me means a lot. Bye-bye for now.